Hello. Hello, is this Uli? Yeah, speaking. Yes, Jason Sonia here. How's it going? Hey, Jason. It's all right. So what time is it? It's uh, 4.26 here, so it would be 9.26 oh, okay. to your time, I think. Yeah, yeah, that's correct. It's not too late for you? No, it's not too late. Okay, well, I appreciate you taking the time for this for this interview. My pleasure. So, Uli John Rod, you know, what have you been up to these days in music? Um, I've been working on uh, my Sky Academy recently, you know, I'm writing a Sky Academy book, so I haven't been do doing any recording uh, recently, but just mainly writing. So that's what I've been up to. <laughs> so how long do you think this will take you? it's very time-consuming, you know, because um, there's a lot of thinking involved and, uh, you know, reflection and and all that. How long have you been writing this? Uh, quite some time. It's quite a, quite a big book. And um, sometimes I put it aside and then I take it uh, out again, you know, a few months later. So it's, I'm, I'm not doing it like in one go, you know. It's, it's, it's too comprehensive for that. Now, how big is this book going to be at the end of it? Uh, good question. <laughs> I've sketched it out, but, um, you know, uh, I'll really be wiser at the end of it. But I think it's, it's probably going to be in several parts, because uh, the Sky Academy, uh, Academy stuff is quite, um, well, comprehensive and far-reaching. So, uh, you know, it touches on so many different subjects um, that it's probably best to uh, split it up into several, and that's exactly what I'm doing, you know. But I'm not totally sure how much it'll be at the end. Now, another thing, too, this summer you'll be playing some dates, I've seen. Dar again. next week. Oh, and next I'm week. I'm playing next week. Um, in fact, no, this week. <laughs> this week. End of the week, I'm, go I'm going to, to Italy, and I'm performing, um, I'm guessing, with uh, Mick Taylor. You remember okay. him? The Rolling Stones. Yeah. Exactly, and uh, I've been told that Billy Cox is on bass, and um, also uh, going to jam with uh, Papa Chubby and uh, um, Anna Popovich, I believe. And most likely these the days, shows. you you join these people like uh, to uh, just do a few songs, most likely in an evening. Yeah, well, you know. Um, uh, sometimes I just get invited to to play, you know, um, without my band, and so I just appear, like as a solo artist, and um, so that that happens uh, a lot in um, in Italy. Mm -hmm. um, in fact, it seems to happen every summer. Um, they've got a very thriving kind of concert scene there, where. Uh, a lot of the the towns they they have outdoor festivals in the summer and it's really nice. I like being there, like like playing there. How's your guitar collection these days? You've kept uh, some of your classic ones to this day, or <laughs> or is it? I um I tend to hold on to my guitars. Yes, I still have my Sky guitars from my original ones, and now we're building new Sky guitars, um, and. Uh, so I've got, um, I guess I've got quite a few guitars. Still have my old white Fender Strat, which I used to play in the Scorpions and Electric Sun. Um, I have some Gibson Les Pauls and classical guitars, acoustic guitars, all sorts of guitars. And very often um, people also give me guitars as, as presents, you know. Mm-hmm. For your amp collection, how is that doing? Do you still have the same amplifiers from the Scorpion days? Actually, I do still have my main amp that I had uh, ever since the beginning of the Scorpions. Um, and I've got several others uh, which are similar. But I'm, I'm always playing, um, and that's a 100-watt Marshall amp. Um, Unfortunately, I can't bring it to New Zealand. It's just too dangerous. I don't, I don't want to lose it. I used to take it on tour, but now it's very rare that <laughs> yeah. I actually take it out, you know, because uh, it's uh, 
kind of invaluable to me. But um, yeah, I I always play tend to play a mixture of several different amps. You know, I'm also playing uh, Framus uh, Cobra amps, which are not so well known, but I I'm combining that with the sound of the Marshall, and, and it gives me a great tone. What do you think of the di- uh, digital effects these days that simulate amplifiers? Um, it's good for a lot of people, um, you know, c- for convenience. Uh, and um, somebody who maybe don't know how to get a great tone on an amplifier um, in an analog way, it's, it's, it's like a quickie shortcut, which kind of works. But to my ears, um, it is uh, not something that that I need or want to do because um, it's pretty much just like playing a keyboard. You know, you're using somebody else's sound, mm. and it's not really anything that's personal. Now, one of the greatest things about the electric guitar, in my mind, is precisely that ability to create such a vast spectrum of sounds, tones, and emotions. Almost every uh, single note can be different. I have a slightly different shade and nuance, and and I love that. And um, So whenever I play a song, it'll never sound exactly the same twice. Now, um, with, of course, the the approach with the digital guitar sounds is just the opposite of that. It'll always sound exactly the same. And um, that's not just not something that's I'm striving that I'm striving for. When you go into uh, let's say play live, is there a special microphone you'd put in front of your amplifier to get that tone? Well, you see, um, one of my my favorite uh, close-up microphone would be um, a Shure SM58, um, as opposed to a, an SM57, which most people seem to be using. Uh, to me, that sounds a little too nasal. But I have to say, when we're playing live, very often that's what you end up with. Um, but when I'm recording on the guitar in the studio, I also use a lot of um, uh, ambience mics and, mm-hmm. and, and microphones that pr- um, capture the sound in a much more shall we say, organic way. So I'm using Neumann mics, Neumann U47, um, 87-67 in combination. And uh, that gives me the kind of sound that you cannot achieve with uh, just a single close mic. And this, like, you'd still use the SM58 also in this uh, miking system? Yes, um, I, um, I sometimes do that as well. And then I blend the two together. Um, but I don't always do that. Sometimes, I mean, for instance, in my um, Electric Sundays, um, I tended to only use the uh, the ambient um, Neumann mics. And I didn't use any closed mics because I didn't like the um, the extreme directness of these of these mics. You mm-hmm. know, they were just a little bit too aggressive to me. Just a little bit too much in in your face like somebody's shouting at you. Um, in a live situation, it's different because you, you have to kind of, shall we say, compete with the drums, which takes um, a vast spectrum of the PA system. Right. You know? And uh, so it's a totally different uh, animal. In fact, it's very hard to get a really good live tone um, out of a PA when, when you're playing with a band, I think. And in that case, you don't use your ambience mics. You're uh, mostly direct mic in a live situation, would you say? Yes, um, I I do like to have ambience mic there, mics there, but they um, they are more prone to feedback, and they are harder to handle in a live situation. You know, particularly when when the music gets loud. Hmm. Uh, when we're playing classical stuff with orchestras, the the ambience mics are far superior. I find for sure because they capture the air around the tone. I mean, the tone, of course, is air. But if you have like a close mic, really, you're you're almost wasting all that precious, you know, air, the all the shades, light and shade that that the air gives you, you know. 
um, when you're close micing it so that uh, the tone doesn't even have a chance to fully develop. Let me take a look at it like this. Considering air is so important with micing and stuff, let's say you record you know, up north compared to down south in a good studio. Would there be somewhat difference with ambient micing in that sense? Every studio is totally different, and I tend to pick studios for one purpose only, and that is what kind of room do they offer me. You know, for instance, uh, in the Electric Sun time, when I did um, three albums, mm -hmm. I did all of them, recorded all of them in London, and I, I used to travel all over London with my um, amp to try out all the big studios. And I ended up in the Olympic studio because I preferred that one for the sound, you know. And um, every studio has a totally different sound, and um, particularly when you when you like the kind of natural ambient sound, then a room really comes into its own, you know. And uh, I really dislike um, small and uh, dead studios where yeah. where there's no sonic reflection um, those are good for recording certain things like vocals and um, you know bass uh, drums to a to a certain degree but uh, the guitar to me is always sounds better in a in a room that where the, the tone can develop and take on a life of its own you know that's why when I stopped um, going to other people's studios because I always tended to spend a fortune there. I started uh, looking when I bought um, my first house, I started looking for a house that would give me uh, large ambient rooms, you know, and that's exactly what I did. So whenever I'm moving somewhere, I'm always looking at the acoustics first. The most important part of a house for Uli well, John Roth. For me, it's a very important part, at least, you know. <laughs> Let's say in the album Taken by Force, you know, Scorpions, that you, you know, Sales of Shrawn is on that, you know, what type of a situation on recording would have that been for the, your guitar tone? Well, you see, that was close mic'd. Um, but I got that tone um, mainly because I didn't use a lot of um, distortion. Okay. It was kind of a semi, semi-distorted tone, you know, relatively clean. And by today's standards, it was totally clean. Uh, in fact, I also remember I completely double-tracked the entire guitar lead, so it had a certain kind of 3D effect to it, which you can barely hear. But um, it's hard to recreate that with just one guitar. Um, I wasn't really happy with the sound of that studio back then, but uh, but uh, in hindsight, the, the guitar sounds are good. I think, particularly for um, for a rock environment, and that was the close mic sound, you know. But it's not the kind of sound that I would go for um, today. I have to say, I amplifier a little bit warmer. What type of amplifier would you have that in that session? That was exactly that Marshall. Marshall hundred watt. That Marshall then, yeah. Like the old plexis, what year would that be? It's a nineteen seventy two. Or seventy one. No. Was it custom? It Customize at all or just uh, straight? No. No, no, no. It was a great amp from the beginning. It's got like a hundred and forty watts before it's even clipping when you actually measure it. It's very, very loud. Um to the dismay of many, um, sound engineer <laughs> yes but that's the price you pay for that kind of sound and, and to this day the speakers on that cab is it still good also no you see the speakers are not the same anymore okay you've changed the speakers you know, I went through various um, various levels of speakers we started out with 120 watts and we ended up with 300 watt um, cabinets and Nowadays, I'm using 300 watt cabinets. I've been doing doing so for many, many years. You know, for sales of Sharon, when you recorded it, was it loud volumes at close miking? Oh yeah, 
Oh yeah, I I always played very loud in the studio because um, otherwise my guitar wouldn't sing because I didn't use any effects or, or gadgets on on my leads other than the wah pedal and um, I mean that goes for at least uh, I guess ninety percent of my leads and uh, that song was no exception. And were you in the studio at the same time, like in the same room at the volume? Yes, actually I was. Um, in the Scorpion days, I was always in the room um, playing with headphones. And in that case, it, it uh, protected your hearing? Oh yeah, my hearing was always protected because I used to play with cotton wool. That's why my ears are still fine. Now, Tokyo Tapes, <laughs> when you did that album, was it recorded hot live on stage? Yeah, yeah, totally. Because that is there a good sounding no album too. No overdubs. Um, it was just all live. Now to this day you still have the same guitars that you played in the 70s? Yes, I still have them. And they're still in great shape and they uh, play so good? Well you see, I, I'm i playing Sky guitars now so I don't really play the Strat anymore. Okay. But I, I love my Strat and, and I still have that white Strat. It's in the museum now. Um, uh, I played one solo with it on, on my last album, Under a Dark Sky. It was a clean kind of uh, lead on a song called uh, Stay in the Light at the end. And I think it sounded great, it sounded beautiful. But um, it has lost a lot of its, um, its output mm -hmm. because the pickups are so old now, you know. Um, originally, it did have a lot more output. It was a relatively loud strat. Um, maybe I'll uh, have it remagnetized one day. We'll see. Now your sky guitars that you uh, you do. Where do people buy these guitars? Well, they're on the market uh, through Dean Guitars. We're doing currently a limited edition of 50 um, guitars, which are um, six strings or seven strings, mm -hmm. and those are um, identical to the guitars that I'm playing. They're all master-built, hand-built. They've got the same pickup system, and, um, you know, I'm personally making sure that each one is uh, as perfect as can be. Um, we're putting a lot of effort into them, and we're building them at the moment. You know, we've all get, already got 30 orders. Yeah, that's where we are at the moment. And in that sense, you do touch the guitars yourself to make sure that... Uh, you not know. just touch. I play them. I make sure that they're set up right. Mm -hmm. um, if something isn't right, then uh, the guitar builder will um, correct it. Um, every guitar will have a different name. I'm, I'm giving them all a different name mm -hmm. because I like to name guitars according to the, um, you know, to the feeling that they, that they have for me. No two guitars are the same. You know, they are, um, I mean, every guitar is kind of uh, different, I find. And uh, Sky Guitars are specialist, especially. But the thing is, they all I make sure that they all play um, equally well mm -hmm. and uh, that they respond well, equally well, you know. But other than that, um, they will have, some of them have slightly different colors and, you know, and people can also order them with, you know, with different kind of neck wood or whatever, you know. Sounds like you're keeping yourself even busy on the guitar world side, well, too. Well, that is important to me because um, the, the Sky Guitar, it took me years to come to the point where I even wanted to put it in the market. Um, originally, I, originally, I would have never considered that because it was such a personal thing, and um, I've been playing them since uh, the early 80s mm -hmm. um, when I also designed it. But uh, over the years, so many people came up to me with uh, self-built copies or copies that guitar makers built for them. And strangely, um, I never came across one which, uh, which was right or which felt right playing-wise. Uh, so in the end, I thought to myself, well, we might as well put it on the market. 
and um, a second uh, very important factor was that there were certain things that I've always wanted to experiment with and, and just to tweak it a little bit here or there and um, try little um, changes. And, of course, um, putting the guitar on the market gave me that advantage. I was able to really hone in and try all the things that I've always wanted to try. Because originally there were only five hand-built Sky Guitars. And only recently I started getting more and uh, because the you know because uh, we started building them and that gave me the chance to to try all all these um, these little ideas and so they they kept getting better right so I'm very happy camper now remarkable and I'm already playing them live you know and, and I will play them in New Zealand well, Uli, it's been a real pleasure talking to you about guitars and stuff, and mm -hmm. uh, wish you a success in your uh, summer tours. Well, I guess we have to make it to Canada then. <laughs> okay, thanks very much, Jason. Have All a right? good evening. And you, bye.